Hello, my name's Brianna and I'm an occupational therapist and I'd like to give you a little bit more information. Let's think of a task that hopefully you do at least once, twice a day. Brushing your teeth. I do this twice a day. I do it sometimes three times a day if I have a coffee and then I wanna brush my teeth afterwards too. So let's think about it in terms of brushing your teeth. Let's break it down because there's many components involved. Something that as adults, we might just do very, very autopilot. It's easy for us. And we think, why is our child taking so long? Um, why is our child taking so long to open their toothpaste? Come on, it's just so easy. Look, mum can do it, done. Let's break it down. Many, many components. Uh, so you clasp your fingers around the brush in one hand, hold the toothpaste bottle in the other. You might use these two fingers while your power grip is still holding your toothbrush. You use your pincer to pull it open. You squeeze on your toothpaste. I'm not gonna do it. But you squeeze on your toothpaste onto your brush. You might close that, balancing this up so you're not tipping your toothpaste off. Put that down. You swap to your dominant hand. I do anyway, some people might not. And then you turn on the tap. So that's a big strong power grip as well. Rinse, brush, all the different directions. So you can see my hand is going all these different ways. And then rinsing it, turning off the tap again, repeat, you might do it a third time depending on your little routine, where it's different, that's fine. And then drying your hands afterwards, wiping your face with the towel afterwards. So many different components. If this process runs smoothly, great. You get, you get dressed, you're ready, you're out to work on time. But if this doesn't go smoothly, you let's say you have low muscle tones in your hands and you find it difficult to move your fingers in a coordinated way, you might drop your toothbrush, let's pick that up again. You might um, squeeze, <laughs> miss squeezing it onto your thing and it runs into the sink and you've got to try again. Or you might have difficulty unscrewing that cap. Your hands aren't strong enough to squeeze the paste. The tasks seem overwhelming and you start to feel frustrated. A, because you can't do the task, and B, now you're gonna be late to work. Why have I painted this picture for you? My point is, fine motor skills are a part of nearly our everyday um, activities at school, and if we have difficulty doing our tasks because of reduced fine motor skills, this then affects our mood and our motivation to do tasks as well. And things like this at school, using toilet paper, kids, they're thinking of trying to balance on a toilet, reach across, how many pages do I pull? How do I actually put my hand there to rip the toilet paper off? So many components. It's the same at school. If your child's finding all of this overwhelming, you might find that they're not going to the toilet, they're holding it on until they get home. Or they are avoiding doing arts and crafts at school. Or they're playing up when it comes to handwriting time. Behaviour is communication. It's not that they're trying to be naughty, it's that they're finding something difficult. And during these early years, it's the most beneficial time to help your little ones develop these motor skills.